and welcome to the show. I am here on Beam NG Drive, taking more of your automation creations around the autocross course. We start with the Enigma Speedster T from Nissinger. This is a 470 horsepower all wheel drive little sports coupe if you like this is the sort of vehicle that we have seen go very very fast already it's a turbo flat six if the turbos are good well that's a nice amount of power it is perhaps on a touch of the heavier side 1123 kilos okay in terms of modern cars that's quite light in terms of what's gone quicker around here that is perhaps three or uh, 300 let's say kilos heavier than some of them but there is a decent amount of power at the end of the day, if it has the control, if we have got the control here to go around this course neatly, that is going to be very, very important. And if we've got the right sort of... Oh, we do not have ABS. Okay, that's something we're going to have to uh, remember to try and deal with. Turning is pretty good. I might have pushed it a bit too far. Gearing-wise, it is nice to see we've got some sensible gears. First is going to work out of most of these corners. Christ, the brakes do not take very much before they lock up. It's almost as bad as the California we had in the first episode. It was like 20% brake and everything locked up. So that's going to be an interesting one to have to deal with. It's not ideal having that sharper of brakes on the car. It's about 40% pedal movement and we're okay. It's quite a difficult thing to adjust to, especially when you're used to driving. In general, in games you don't have brakes locking up at that lower level of, uh, of pedal movement. Uh, so, yeah, it's always a fun one to have to deal with. Ultimately, without ABS you will have slightly better braking performance, but it's more difficult, or it's more e easy to make mistakes. It's more difficult to extract that performance. What do you like straight line speed-wise? 87 miles an hour down the back straight. It is not the quickest car, quickest, quickest car we've seen down there, but that's still pretty good going. Oh, it's a big wiggle from the Enigma. It's another lock-up, though. Christ, that's, that's going to be some fun and games into those big into those big stops. It does feel pretty good through the corners. What have we got? Opening run. 21's considering... 21 six with brake issue or with struggling to adapt to those brakes quickly. It's not a bad first run. Not a bad first run for the car. You know, not even really noticing that the vehicle is turbocharged in all of this. The turbos are at the right place. At first gear is fantastic for getting out of these hairpit, well, these out of these turns, which is exactly what we need. So, yeah, it's kind of geared, geared pretty well. That's something I didn't really think about when kind of setting this challenge. I didn't realise just how, just how important the gear was going to be and how many people would try different things and some of them not, not work, just just not pan out in the end. Ooh, a little bit of frame rate lag. It's not ideal. Don't know whether it's going to come through the recording or not, but there we go. Oy, that's... It's a little sketchy getting the car slowed down there. I mean, I want to try and be quick through that section, but not the easiest to get right. This corner up here is where we have got the most liberties can be taken with the life. If anything, I was just a little too tight to the inside there. It's a little, little scruffy in all of that. Can we crack the 90 miles an hour before we're going to need to jump on those brakes? There we go. Try and get it neatly out of here. Don't get any wheel spin. This did have a little bit of wheel spin, uh, 89, and still struggling to get it slowed down in all of that. Now we're going to walk first out of there. Uh, <laughs> that's, it's an interesting corner because you kind of just hold the car around it for... You, you think you can get away, get on that power a little bit longer, but it's just a very, very long hairpin down there. And then we can accelerate it across the line. It's another car to go sub 1 minute 20. So 19.9. It's not quite going to chat. It's not, it's not quite at the top of the table yet. That's the 19 or 1. But uh, it's quick. It is It is quick around here. I, yeah, this is, when you look at the stats on the card, this is the sort of thing that uh, you do expect to be on the, on the fast side. Good power. Good power delivery. Again, that's so, so critical around here. And helpful gear ratios. It's all, most of all it's coming down to here is, is can I get the, can I get the braking spot on because it is difficult, it is very very fiddly, you can see all of the uh, witness marks on the road where things did not quite go according to plan on previous run, I kind of like the 
let the skid marks stay in between in between the runs. I might be a little bit cowardly into there, but it's, it's the whole. If I if I push it too hard, we're going to have a really big accident. Is it better just to be a little bit slower into a corner and maybe you know, maybe not have that big crash, but you risk losing time? It's always the fun of of autocross, and when you get three runs, it makes having an easy to drive car so paramount. It certainly isn't the easiest vehicle to drive, although that is more to do with the with the braking issues perhaps. I got very wide out there, but that's actually okay. We can get away with a pretty decent exit for the car for the Enigma up towards this final hairpin. Actually got it stopped pretty well this time around. Now patience, 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 patience. There we go. Now we can boot it towards the line. It's a tenth quicker. Up, down, well, down to a 19, 8 around there. Yeah, we found a little bit of speed in all of that. It's it's a fiddly one. It's a fiddly one to get right, but when you do get it right, it's a very, very quick car. Our next vehicle, this one, comes from Zenki. It is the FRR1. 520 horsepower from a Turbo i6. It is the most powerful car to go today. It is also the heaviest car at 1,259 kilos. Again, much as I said with the, with the Enigma, it's a bit on the heavier side compared to the majority of vehicles to run around here. Still not too terrible. Power to weight ratio is good. It is rear-wheel drive, though. Now, ultimately, rear-wheel drive is unlikely to really challenge with the very fastest of the all-wheel drive cars at a circuit of this nature, but it may well stand a chance of becoming the fastest rear-wheel drive car. About one high 130 is the time to try and beat. Oh, there feels like there's some turbo lag. Ooh, we have no OBS in this either. Uh, <laughs> There's also no mighty wing. It's kind of weird seeing... Oh, we've seen so many crazy wings. It's weird seeing a vehicle without a mighty wing uh, on the back. Especially a vehicle with this sort of body style not having a mighty, mighty wing. I think there might be some sort of a lip along the back for some downforce. But I'm not sure. Oh, we are going to have... A, no, I don't think it's quite as sharp with the uh, brake lockups. Although it's, yeah, not far away from it. Okay, we're going to weave our way through there. Uh, turning does seem pretty good. It doesn't feel quick out of the corners, though. It doesn't feel like it's really quite got the punch out of the corners. That, though, might be to be expected, although it feels more engine-related than it does traction. It's not that it's spinning its wheels. I mean, it does spin its wheels some places, but uh, oh, like down there, for example, what are we doing? Speed, 80 miles an hour. I mean, it's pretty quick. Uh, brakes maybe aren't that much better. I still had to have a couple of goes at it and still got everything locked down the bottom there. And fire it up towards the hairpin. Okay, no, they are still difficult to work. <laughs> still very, very difficult to work with. Uh, what are we going to have runtime? I think it's going to be the fastest rear-wheel drive car. It is by a fair margin, actually, a 27.2. I mean, it's up there with the lower end, or the more difficult end, essentially, of the all-wheel drive cars right there. And that was, again, another run scruffy in a couple of places. So there is definitely more time to be found in in this car. I mean, the actual, like, turning grip is pretty good. Turning grip is is pretty damn good. Through, through, the, through the corners, we've got enough momentum. I just don't think we can get out of them well enough. And that's not all... Like, there, we're not really spinning the wheels. It's just, it's not quite got the go. Thankfully, gear ratio-wise, with these sort of engines, if you've got wonky gear ratios coupled with turbo turbo issues, you're really going to have a tough time making the most out of... The, well, making anything really out of them. Gear ratios are pretty solid, though. First gear works for all of these. Just the engine doesn't quite have the go until... It, well, until you have to kind of change gear, almost. Oh, we go very wide through there. Now, we will get away with that, because we have got the checkpoint on the way in. Carry some speed. <laughs> so difficult trying to get this braking sorted with these cars. It's so, so difficult. I'm suspecting a lot of people have run sort of very, very aggressive race brakes and race pads, which is okay. Oh, no. We're going to hit the back of the car. Uh, <laughs> that it just doesn't. Yeah. It, even on the acceleration through sort of up to second gear, it's not the particularly long straight. We're still getting, oh, we're still getting wheel spin. We still snap the car around the place. Uh, yeah, really, I would imagine very aggressive brakes and aggressive brake pads. Uh, you put those two together, and I think that's what you, how you end up with the very, very 
grabby, the very locking brakes. I mean, <laughs> interestingly, that would have been the second fastest rear-wheel drive time, despite the fact we had a spin. So, yeah, it's, it's certainly a quick car. It's, you've got to really fight with the vehicle. It's a very, very smoky start. Yeah, we can get some good some good wheel spin off of that line. I've got to watch second. Yeah, you've got to just changing gear as you're getting ready to slow down for the corner there. It's not probably not really necessary. You might get away with hanging it in first. I'm not quite sure how high the engine is. Gonna, it's a decent revvy engine. And most of the engines we have got are going to be pretty pretty high revving. It's easier to get kind of high revving, high power out of the two litres than to try and get uh, torquey engines. We haven't seen... Well, you simply struggle to get massive torque out of the out of the little two litre engines so most have gone for you know 9, 10, 12,000 RPM even we have seen oh we're going to have a little just a little burst of wheel spin I mean the tyres are probably not really enjoying them I in mean, the brakes in fact this might even have a little bit weird because the rear brakes are holding more temperature than the front brakes that might even be a strange brake balance thing we've got going on with this car um, yeah the the <laughs> Brakes are actually... I mean, that might not be helping it. I've, I can't really look too much at the, uh, the the dials, at the gauges and so on, information while we're running, but very, very cold front brakes could actually be a big problem. We might be struggling just because we can't get the temperature in the in the race brakes. That seems like a slightly weird... Oh, no! Seems like a slightly weird brake distribution. We did get it across the line. <laughs> Christ. Oh, no, it's a wide boy car. We pinged it off the back of the thing. That's a shame. I don't know. Do you know if we were going? I think we were on for a very similar time looking at the split times in all of that. Yeah, so definitely, definitely break temperature. Uh, definitely break temperature issues and, and lockups were going on. I don't know what that was doing in the other cars. I might have just missed it. That does not help. That's another another vehicle that makes it very difficult to drive, or a way it makes it difficult to drive. Our next vehicle comes from Tom C. Lee. This is the B16 Mini. We have got 290 horsepower all-wheel drive turbo i4. It is pretty damn light, though. 756 kilos. Also, interestingly, uh, the Mini is only a 1.6. Hasn't gone for the full 2 litre. I mean, it, the, the, the maximum size was 2 litre. You didn't have to use the 2 litre. So there's a 1.6 uh, litre Mini. There's not a bad amount of power, though. Around the 300 horsepower mark is what we have been seeing from a, a fair few vehicles. And it is very light, all-wheel drive, and a teeny tiny wheelbase. If we have got good stopping performance, if we have got... Are we going to go? Um, apparently the engine wasn't... Tur How was the engine not turned on? Okay, that's a new one. That's not counting as a first run. <laughs> Never mind. It's the first staller on the... As a staller on the grid. That's some pretty good acceleration. Right there. That is some nice throttle response. Ah, we have got ABS in this one. We're not going to be worried. But we have seen cars even with ABS have issues in terms of... Um, in terms of either little brake lockups or brakes doing strange things, it's not uh, just use ABS solves all. It might be brake balance, brake material, and, and temperature, and so on. Uh, we are going. That this is rapid. This is seriously rapid. I mean, a mini is great for autocross or whatever the hell, <laughs> whatever the hell this is. I just call it autocross because it's the closest sort of thing. I think the auto test is what it's called in England. Autocross is actually like grass track racing here. And I've, I've seen some of the videos of the, the, the national championships where they're running uh, silly cars, like silly cars, like crazy modified cars. And funnily enough, Caterham's minis are the sort of vehicle that are very, very much sought after. What have we got straight line speed wise? It's not going to be the fastest. It's simply not got the power of the six, seven hundred, or probably five, six hundred horsepower. A better, uh, a better comparison. Cars. It's not got that power, but it has got not very much weight, and it's it's so good through these corners. The way it changes direction is exquisite here. Uh, I feel like you can just carry so much speed, and across the line, it's a 19.3 on its first run. Well, this, remember, 1.6 litre engine in this. That's that's going to have scared a Harrier. That is definitely going to have scared a Harrier. We've only got a couple of tenths of a second to try and find in the in the B16 Mini. It is, yeah, this is the sort of vehicle that you want 
for, for autocross. Oh, I've turned it a little bit too soon early on. I think we can get away with it. It's just so much grip available here. There is so much grip. It can change direction around get around these corners so fast and then we've still got enough power yeah it, it's way down well, i say way down it will be down in terms of top speed and certainly at a longer circuit it would struggle against some of the cars doesn't need to worry about that though because it's not at a longer circuit it's being tested that's very sideways through all of that i've got away with it somehow uh, <laughs> Don't know whether it's going to be a fast run or not, but we did get away with a massive slide through all of that. Okay, we can go wider on the exit, and we can then jump on the brakes down here. Okay, mini. Oh, still a little bit early, guys. It's almost like trying to adjust now suddenly from those previous cars with their difficulties to, uh, well, driving this. How late can we get on the brakes down there? Pretty late. Again, we're a little wide, but I think sometimes you can get away get away a little bit more with being wide in a couple of places here oh that was wandering towards oh that was too that was too late on the brakes we were wandering towards the uh metal gateway oh there's some sort of wonky through there ah that wasn't a good run 20.2 that was a, a shonky run by me mostly oh it looks like there was a uh you have a big roll across the line looks like we've got a uh, nice little uh, bird cage going on <laughs> underneath the vehicle okay this is the one that's going to have to it's going to have to count for the mini if we're going to get the uh, little all-wheel drive car to the top of the of the table. Big oversteer moment out of there as I'm trying to be well, try, try to find speed with the car. It is not always so easy to once you've got that good run, you then just try and find where can I go quicker than that. And you've got to push the car more in places, and well, sometimes that doesn't quite always. Uh, work out as we saw on that last run with this. Okay, let's go with the neat and tidy option. I've got a squeaky kitten in the background. I've got kitten cheerleading for the mini here. Oh, that was very, very close to the concrete barrier. But never mind. Okay, get on the power nice and early out of here. We will run wide and then early on the brakes for these hairpins. Yes. <laughs> Just like the constant change of braking zone when you've got a car this fast and this darty. Darty in a good way as well. It's not twitchy. We don't have silly oversteer. We're not going to get caught out by the car. I don't I don't expect that felt very, very good down the straight. I mean, that's about spot on in terms of the braking. We've not, I've not even thought once about the car being turbocharged. There's been power immediately available absolutely everywhere around this course we are going to run across the line it's an 18.6 that is a hell of a car that is a hell of a car is the first vehicle into the 18s and it's actually one of the less powerful cars to have gone that is lightweight incredible throttle response excellent excellent handling no twitchiness from the car excellent grip through the corners that is absolutely what you want. Nice, reliable brakes. That is going to take some beating. That That is... When I mean, we thought that, you know, the Harrier was quick. We thought getting the low 19s is going to be pretty damn fast around here. That, that Mini is going to take some serious, serious beating. Our final vehicle today has certainly got uh, something... To, to live up to following on from the mini this from uh, tom who does maths is called the, the ronald 5 turbo it's mad but <laughs> it's utterly utterly bonkers it is another tiny short wheelbase car with some tiny but very very wide tires uh all-wheel drive 369 horsepower in this one so more powerful than the mini this one a turbo flat six it is heavier than the mini 912 kilos uh, there is a mighty wing on the back. I mean, it's a sight to behold, shall we say, and I can't think of a better way of describing it than that. So let's go and see what the case. Well, very short gear ratios. That's not necessarily a bad thing, as long as there is a gear that is in the in the power band somewhere. It's like we're going to be in second out of these hairpins. Uh, potentially, it might be a little. It's going to have to be second because first is not going to be long enough for that so second will have to work it's another car we've got a good change of direction going on with it it might look doesn't change direction as well as a mini no it might look silly but it is actually pretty good around these corners now yeah it's not badly balanced it's not badly balanced i'm glad to, i say i'm glad to see it suits my driving style of course when we've got a car that's 
will tend to understeer rather than oversteer. That works for me. We're going to get a little bit of a slide there, but nicely controlled. I didn't actually pay any attention to see if this had ABS installed. It does have ABS installed. Okay. That's a useful thing to know here. What do we like straight line speed? We're likely to be pretty good for power. Uh, 85 miles an hour. Yeah, not, not too shabby. Fractionally quicker than that Mini, I think. I don't even remember what the Mini was doing by that final run. Like the, the final run for the Mini, it was just so much a case of can't pay any attention because I've got to get everything right with that around these next few quarters we go. I think it's going to be a pretty quick time. Oh, it was going to be a pretty quick time. Managed to hit that twice now. Oh, oh, nope. There's a gear to get across the line. It's <laughs> still a pretty quick time. Ooh, okay, this is probably going to go sub-20. I don't think it's going to get the mini. I mean, considering it the, the second-to-last checkpoint before we hit that gantry, we're at a 19-1, uh, a so we're already slower than the mini. Sub-20 should be doable with this car. <laughs> Something as mad as this could well be going sub-20. Uh, yeah, there's been some interesting... There have been some interesting designs. That is for sure. Ooh, a bit wide through there. Can get away with it on some of these corners. You can just... Yeah, you'll be a little bit slower at some points around them, but you can get away with uh, the exit, kind of getting the power down a little bit sooner on the exit. We're going to be slippy slidey through there if we're not careful. Yeah, I got that one. Oh, braking and steering. It's all got a little bit scruffy at the start. I'm taking all sorts of different lines, but there is still potentially an okay line out of all of it somewhere in there. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, it's... Not quite got the same same responsiveness as the Mini, but it, I was slightly spoilt by a previous car. Yeah, this is still pretty good around here. The throttle response is still working. Again, we've not really had any massive laggy turbo cars outside of the uh, the rear-wheel drive vehicle. Even then, that that was not too bad on the on the old turbo front. Now let's not clip any more of the archways with the car. Whoa, it's slipping and sliding its way up towards that uh, final hairpin. Got a little bit deep through there. And then it is the wiggle towards the finish line. It's a 19.5. This might go... Oh, I'm itching my nose. I, whoops. <laughs> I was itching my nose uh, and managed to press the reset button as I was... Uh, Move my hand off the controller. Clever me. It was a 19.5 something. We didn't actually see quite what it was. That's, uh, I didn't have time to read what it was, but that's a good time. It's a second near enough that is needed if we are going to challenge the Mini. I'd be amazed if this could do it, but you never know. It would be quite the turn with such an interesting looking vehicle to uh, go and compete with the, <laughs> with the Mini. It kind of looks like a spaceship, I'm going to be honest. It does look like a spaceship quite a lot. Uh, but, you know, if it works, it works at the end of the day. The brakes don't feel great in this, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I wonder if this is a case of race brakes and they are just not keeping enough temperature in them. Because, well, certainly for the, maybe for the first part, they're not giving enough temperature in them. They do seem to get quite cold in between these fairly sizable stops that the vehicle is having to do. That might also be another thing that we've not really had to uh, think about before. I certainly know when it comes to the game's normal cars, uh, race brakes, they're too cold, are pretty useless. So that's something else that we might not have thought about for, for vehicles. But there we go. Uh, another run down the straight. We've got to wiggle on while trying to get it sorted for the braking zone. We got away with that somehow through all of that. Now, let's try and not go exploring at the hairpin. Let's get a big salt. Okay, we have got some temperature in the brakes, at least, for this final section, which is good around these last few quarters we go. It's a run across the line. It's another sub. <laughs> it's another sub-19. It is not going to be fast enough to beat the, the B-16 Mini, but... The spaceship mad thing is going to go second. The Ronald 5 Turbo. That's, that's far. That is very fast through that course. And that is showing the uh, advantage of a well-balanced, tiny, tiny wheelbase vehicle. Right there. And massive tyres. I mean, they are very big tyres for a car this small. They are very big tyres indeed on a car this small. Uh, so... <laughs> High, high grip, tiny wheelbase, and we have got yeah, some real, real speed out of these vehicles.
on to the leaderboard and it is all a change at the top three of today's vehicles go into the top five with the b16 mini taking the top spots the Ronald five turbo not far behind only three tenths of a second difference between the pair of those and they are the first two cars to get into the 118s both yeah very very quick cars and it's all about the certainly for the mini is about that throttle response the fact that it's just ready to go out of every single corner it is incredibly incredibly light and they're both cars that were easy to extract performance. The Enigma, that will go into a fifth place. In 1980, still pretty damn quick to go around this course. A little bit more difficult, though, especially with the brakes locking up about, well, 20, 30, 30% pressure, does make that car a tad more difficult to drive to extract performance when you only have a small number of runs. We do also have to go a fair bit further down to find the FRR1. It goes into a 17th place. It will become the fastest rear-wheel drive car, and it is by a fair margin, some three and a half seconds. It wasn't, again, it wasn't the easiest. Brakes were a bit strange on that. The front brakes really just didn't seem to get any temperature in it. It was a very, very difficult car to just to get to grips with, with the braking being a bit strange. Still, that's a pretty good time. That is a pretty good time for the car, nevertheless. It beats the, the Hell Climb Special, as I said. It's, it's well clear of the, well, the front-wheel drive car and the selection of rear-wheel drive vehicles. That, though, is going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.